Am I in a harness? Yeah, do they still have their stinger? Like, do you have to be careful not to get stung? So today is a little bit of a different video. We are going somewhere called the City Museum. It's located here in St. Louis, Missouri. You hear museum and you're thinking like one thing. When we get there, you'll see that it is not that thing you think of. Hidden inside randomly is this little insectarium. It's kind of random and you just kind of happen to come across it. And inside there are tons of specimens. Now, if you live in like certain parts of the United States right now, you'll know that we're currently facing like broods of cicadas emerging. So I guess because of that, the City Museum is hosting a bug pinning class or I guess like tutorial and they gave me permission to film it for you guys. I thought it would be fun because, well, first of all, I'm definitely going to go out and try to find cicadas to pin. But also you guys ask me all the time, how to pin insects or spiders and i'm hoping that this class kind of sheds a light on it they don't have too many spiders there but they do have like lots of other insects but i thought it'd be fun i thought it'd be interesting to kind of get out and do that today and hopefully you guys are also going to experience the cicadas if you want to i know a lot of people don't like the cicadas but i'm so excited i have only seen like one or two this year just kidding they literally just started emerging a couple days after filming this and they are now everywhere Here's a freshly molted one next to its shell. And then here is another one emerging to molt. Oh my gosh, like I collected so many shells off this tree yesterday. And now look at this. So this little guy just crawled up from underground and this is what the cicadas look like living underground for 13 to 17 years. They come up here onto the tree or wherever they can and then they molt and this is what the molt looks like, which I'm gonna be keeping those. And after they molt, they turn into these little guys. So I have been collecting them like crazy, their molts and even them, just so that I can try to get a time lapse of them molting and pen them when they pass away. Anyway, back to the city museum. On the third floor of the city museum is the George Deal Insectarium and he has collected pretty much all of these bugs that you see. This is his collection and he's pinned all of them. So these had been collected years ago and I had to soften them up again. He had a uh, little Tupperware container, put some uh, paper towels and things in the bottom. Maybe something like some little crushed mothballs to keep from molding. Some guys say they can get them to soften up in 24 hours. I think three or four days works better. If you're collecting, it's a lot easier to pin everything the same day. Pins come in sizes from uh, triple zero up to seven. And seven is a really long one. The only reason you need to add is for some large beetles. Everything else about an inch and a half long. So what you're going to do is find the center of the thorax, that's the middle section of a moth. Try to get the uh, pin through there so it's lined up 90 degrees to the body. And then, this board's a little big, but it's centered in there. These I made up years ago. 
A lot of people will use the tracing paper and hold the wings down like that. Get a couple heavier pins for the round. The body's going to want to sag down. We get two pins, cross them underneath the body, the, the abdomen part. That kind of keeps the body from swiveling all over the place. What you use to pull the wing into place is a, a stiff uh, bristle from a brush. So you want to hook it under a real heavy vein of the uh, wing. They start pulling that up. And I put the graph paper on there. Ideally, you want you know the wings to be even on the left and right. Yeah. Graph paper helps you line it up. That's a large one. On the beetles, butterflies and moths, you want to hit the pin right in the center of the body because 99% of the moths and butterflies are identified by the wings and the veins in the wings. Beetles, you want to get to the right side of that wing cover, elytra. And as you're going through the uh, beetle, kind of pay attention. Sometimes all of a sudden the leg will start popping. That means you've hooked the inside of the uh, joint for the leg and you tear the whole leg off. Move it around a little bit. And leave about three eighths or less. And the museum collectors, they'll pretty much be happy with that. Get a pin and start trying to fold the legs out to where the legs are on three on each side of the body. And then pop the head out a little bit. And then you look for the antenna. There you go. Now there's one antenna. The other one's being a little stubborn. It was close. You want a hornet? Yeah, do they still have their stinger? Like, do you have to be careful not to get stung? No, when they're dead, they're just dead. Right. I hardly get stung catch them when they're locked. Some guys are starting to pin a little bit to one side because when you get into bees, wasps, hornets, the underside can be a real important identifying feature. Good thing about wasps and bees and hornets, they're a lot, a lot uh, tougher. They'll take a little more abuse when you're moving parts around than a butterfly or moth. You reach under there and pull these out. And once again, if a museum is doing this, like the Field Museum had a collection come in there working on, they die laughing watching somebody do this much for one specimen. <laughs> they're looking at the big picture, they want yeah. to know how many, where they came from. So that's more for a, a display of shadow box. So after a week of drying, Edmund's gonna be laying down like this. Yeah. So what I do a lot of times on this stuff, I'll pin it and then I'll stand the uh, board up vertically while it dries so it's not, a, you get the body straight. Like yeah. Now that I got a ton of helpful pointers from George, I decided that I wanted to try practicing. And although I don't have all of the supplies he has, I do just have some styrofoam and some needles and I went outside and found a dead bug. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Except it turns out that the dead bug is still twitching and I just don't have the heart to finish it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it aside. Although I will probably be pinning it here shortly. It doesn't seem like it's hanging on for much. George talked about the difference between pinning them for science versus pinning them for display. And I am going to be pinning them for display. This is just going to be a practice specimen because obviously it's not the like most perfect specimen, but I just figured this would be a good one to practice on. That said, I do have some collected that I'm keeping in this enclosure with the intention of keeping them throughout their life cycle and then pinning them once they die. I don't know if that's kind of weird or not, but I just think that pinning bugs is so much fun and I think that the cicadas coming are super cool and I absolutely love it and I'm having so much fun going out and just watching them and also bringing them in and also watching them. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit different. Like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're not. Don't forget to find Instagram use probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast, Teespring, Discord, everything. It's all linked down below. And now we're gonna go get tacos from my favorite place. It's called Terra Taco. If you ever come to St. Louis, come check it out.